Faith in Jesus Christ brings about that righteousness. The only way to get a free gift is to by receive it, isn't it? Huh? By faith. Do you remember last week what I taught about? We all have the same measure of faith. So what's the problem? We're falling down to the doubt and unbelief twins. Remember the twins? Remember the doubt and unbelief twins? Huh? We are falling prey to them. Because God's Word, God says, uh, we have been acquitted, we have been made righteous, we have been justified, we are set free, the truth sets us free, we've been blood bought. So what's the problem? We're falling down to the twins. You see, because we are what God says we are, are we not? Okay. We have been brought into right standing. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 21, the Word of God says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. In other words, if you had to go out here and try to earn your right standing with God Almighty, then Christ died in vain. So he's saying, do not frustrate the the grace of God. Because you see, we can stand before God without condemnation, not because we worked ourselves into a position of worthiness before Him, but because we have faith in the fact that Jesus Christ's sacrifice was sufficient to eliminate that sin or that sin nature. God sees us as a as striving. Uh, uh, he does not see us. Uh, he doesn't want us to strive to attain something that's already been bought and paid for by the blood of the Lamb. In in Romans 5, 2, the Word of God says, By whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand. In other words, Jesus Christ has given us the access. Our continuing relationship with God is based upon the same grace that brought us into salvation. You all remember when we got saved? When we got born again? We might have had a little bit of fear come against us. But it was nothing to it, was there? Huh? Man, it's just a free gift. By grace we were saved. The rest of it's the same way. It's all the same way. We are saved by grace and we can now stand in that same uh, unmerited favor for righteousness. Our right standing with God is based on the fact that we believe in the sufficiency of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because we cannot earn what our Lord Jesus Christ has already bought and paid for. In in, in 2 Corinthians 5.21... This should set some of you free here. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Who's us? Us. Okay. Who knew no sin, that was Jesus knew no sin, that we, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So you see, we've already been brought into right standing. We've been acquitted. We've been declared innocent. God justified us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. God forgave us all of our sin and made us to be the righteousness of God in Him. Because you see, it is the truth that sets you free. 
It is the truth that sets you free. Now, if we go to Second uh, Peter, Second Peter, uh, verse chapter one. Verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied unto you, he's talking to each and every one of us, through the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? It is the Word of God, is it not? It is the truth. When you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So you see, grace and peace. Grace, in other words, unmerited favor, and peace. And the Word of God says, be multiplied. Multiplied unto who? You. Through the what? Knowledge of God. Through the truth. Through the Word of God and of Jesus our Lord. According to, accordingly, as His divine power hath given unto us, talking about us, all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us, us, exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Not the sin nature, the divine nature. So you see, every believer is righteous on the inside because he has been, become a partaker of God's divine righteous nature. We've received that divine nature in other words, that sin nature has been replaced with a divine nature. Hallelujah. So that right standing is infused into the very being of every Christian. We are brought into right standing with God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. So this is why we can come boldly before God's throne and why we can have the abiding presence of His Holy Spirit continually. My dear people, <clears throat> you would never experience the presence of God in your own lives if you were not in right standing. Is that not so? You wouldn't experience it if you were not in right standing. That's right. You wouldn't experience it. If you were separated by sin, you're not. You've been bought and paid for. You belong to Him. You see, it is the truth that sets you free. You know, you can sit here and read the Word, but then the but, but there's a truth within that Word, and it's that truth that sets you free. In First John. Chapter 3. In 1 John chapter 3, the word of uh, verse 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we, talking about us, we should be called the sons of God. So you see, we're called the sons of God. We are the sons of God of God we've been adopted if you like so without our having been made uh, righteous in other words brought into right standing we could not be called the sons of God could we not that's right because those uh, God is righteous and those that are born of him have the same nature that he has Now, give an example. Do you remember when, before we were born again, whose nature did we have? The old devil, didn't we? We had his nature. That's been replaced. Hmm? What is his nature? That's right. But there's a lot more to it than that. It's condemnation, for instance. Sickness and disease. You're put under law. You're put under a curse. In uh, 
Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10, the Word of God says, For by grace, unmerited favor, are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. What is a gift of God? The grace of the salvation, and the faith. You better believe it. Verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. Then it says, And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. What's the gift of God? The grace, the salvation, and the faith. Grace is what? Unmerited favor. Saved is what? Salvation and faith. Measure of faith. It's all a gift. It's all a gift. You know who makes it hard? We do. Huh? We're the big dummies. Are we? So, God has made the way clear for all believers to walk completely free. It's the truth that sets you free. You just heard the truth. All believers... I want you all to say, say all. 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 That's right. To do what? Walk completely free from the domination of Satan. We've been set free from him. And, 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 And Jesus Christ has called us to walk in that walk. You know, our lives before, before Christ, if you think about it, uh, before we were under God's curse. Now we are loved by God. The curse is gone. It's gone. Before we were born again, we were doomed by sin. Doomed by sin. After you're born again, we're shown God's mercy and given His salvation. Before we were born again. What did we do? We just went along with the crowd. Hmm? Went along with the crowd. What do we do now? We stand up for Jesus. We stand up for Jesus. <coughs> Before we were born again, we were actually God's enemy. We were His enemy. Now we're God's children. Before we were born again, we were enslaved to Satan. We were held captive to sin. Now, we're free in Christ. We are free in Christ. Before, we followed our own evil thoughts and our own evil passions. Now, we're taken from grave to glory. Before, we were under God's anger, a God of wrath. Now, we've been given undeserved favor. Undeserved favor. Before we were spiritually dead. Now, if you're born again, you've been given a new spiritual life. Before we were separated from God, now we were brought into right standing. Many believers do not understand the work that God has done in the inner man. We are a spirit, a soul, and a body. And I will teach on that. But you do not understand the work that has gone on in you. The work of the cross cleansed us from guilt and condemnation. It's gone. The Holy Spirit does not preach condemnation. He does not preach condemnation. In Romans 8.1, the Word of God says, There is therefore now. Christ Jesus. If, how many of you are in Christ Jesus? There is no, now no condemnation. There is none. 
The blood of Jesus Christ washed us clean from all, all, all of our sin. And that sin nature has been replaced with a divine nature. Yet, if that were all that was done, we would be forgiven, but, not, and, but still dominated by an evil inner nature which would want to make us to sin. But the work of Calvary not only removed the guilt and condemnation of sin, and listen to this, my dear people, it also removed the source. It removed the source. It's gone. It is gone. So the truth does what? You've got to understand that the fact of redemption... uh, We walk in the liberty and the freedom that Jesus Christ has purchased for us. He has given us through His blood new life, a new nature, a new freedom. A new freedom. Because you see, the truth will make you free. What is the truth? It is the reality of the good news. Huh? It is the reality of the good news. It is the reality of the good news. That's the truth. It's where the rubber meets the road. It is a relationship, a personal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And that salvation is available to all, regardless of their identity, their sin, or their heritage. It doesn't make any difference who they are. We are saved by grace, unearned, undeserved favor from God, through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross. Jesus said when he's on the cross, what did he say? It is finished. What do you think he's talking about? It's finished. It's finished. Through Him, we can stand before God justified. Not guilty. Acquitted. In right standing. It is freedom at its finest. It is freedom at its finest. Because you see, it is the truth that sets you free. It is the truth that sets you free. Freedom that comes from being saved. Freedom from the power of the sin nature. Freedom from the domination of the law. Freedom to become like Jesus Christ and discover God's limitless love. Adam in the Garden of Eden Eden was given a freedom of choice and he made the wrong choice, didn't he? Jesus Christ is that second Adam. And we have another chance for freedom. And most of us have been given that freedom. We are given a freedom of choice. So you say, why do I struggle then? Why do the thoughts come? Why do I have these problems? Because when they, the Bible calls them a fiery dart, which I've done a teaching on. That fiery dart hits and you start entertaining it. When you entertain it, that fiery dart becomes a flame and then, and then it becomes a forest fire, a forest fire, a big forest fire, and it is starting to start spreading all over, your, over, all over your head, down through your body, and then to your wife, then to your kids, then to your house, then to your job. Why? Because you didn't cast it down and take it captive to the obedience of Christ. And how do you do that? Do you remember? It is written. It is written. It is written. You see? We are born again, blood-bought <coughs> children of God in right standing. <clears throat> in right standing. So when the enemy comes in with a fiery dart and shoots you, he is illegal. He has no right. He has to bow to the resurrected Son. He has to bow to the Word of God. He has to bow to the blood of the Lamb. So why isn't he? Why isn't he? You've already been set free. The truth sets you free. The Word of God sets you free. Jesus Christ on the cross sets you free. So why do you struggle? Because you're not taking that thought captive. 
You're not casting it down. That's the problem. You see? Everybody with me? Right. You remember when Jesus Christ was in the uh, the wilderness? That's how he, that's how he, uh, he beat the enemy. It is written. It is written. It is written. We've done a lot of teaching on that. So you see, it is the truth that sets you free. So when you speak that truth, the enemy flees. The enemy flees. Amen. Well, where was that? I got off on the... <clears throat> Amen. Jesus Christ is the truth that sets us free. He is a source of truth. He is a truth that sets each and every one of us free. He is a perfect standard of what is right. He frees us from the consequences of sin. He frees us from self-deception. He frees us from Satan. He shows us clearly the way to freedom. Jesus' perfect truth frees us to be all that God has meant us to be. Jesus set you free so that you can become the person that God created you to be. You see, if the, if the enemy can find a crack, for instance... It could be in your past. What he does is he, he keeps looking and looking. And he finds this crack. And although you've been set free from it, although you've been delivered from it, he tries to zero in on that crack because that crack is not quite little healed yet. It's not quite healed. And he keeps zeroing in on that crack. And he hits it. And he hits it. And he hits it. And he hits it with a fire dart. Bang. <clears throat> then he hits it with another fire dart. Bang. And he hits it with another fire dart. Bang. And he tries to get into that crack. He tries to get into that crack. And what we do is, as human beings, we start entertaining it because we haven't renewed our minds to the Word of God. We start entertaining it. And then it starts making problems. And then we start getting fearful, or we start getting jealous, or we start getting uh, uh, angry, whatever. But we've been set free from all of that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise you, Father. <clears throat> 